Hello everybody, I am Chris Baker from LuckyGunner.com. Last time we talked about the idea of a true practical rifle. For me, that's a uh, suppressed Savage 22 long rifle bolt action that I use for pest control. Today, I've got a quick follow-up for you with some more 22 goodness. I wanna talk about practical external ballistics for the 22 long rifle cartridge. External ballistics refers to what the bullet does between the muzzle and the target. If we were talking about what the bullet does after it hits the target, that's terminal ballistics. We've talked about 22 terminal ballistics in the past, and I'm sure we'll cover it again sometime. That's when we get to do the fun stuff with ballistic gel. But for now, we are looking at external ballistics, in particular, bullet velocity and trajectory. And what I mean by practical external ballistics is that I wanna look at what the bullet does in flight and then apply that knowledge to how I'm gonna actually use the rifle outside of the shooting range. The main thing I'm looking for is bullet drop. For the distances I'm planning to use the rifle, where do I need to aim in order to hit my target? Velocity is important because faster bullets will drop less by the time they reach the target. And velocity is also important for pest control because I wanna make sure the bullet's gonna have enough energy to take out that animal quickly and cleanly. But of course, that gets us back into the territory of terminal ballistics. You can find numerous ballistic tables for 22 long rifle online. There are multiple ballistic calculator apps that'll give you excruciatingly detailed information about what a bullet should do at a specific distance. These can all be very useful tools. Of course, ballistic tables are just a starting point. You have to actually shoot some groups out of your own gun to find out what your specific rifle and ammo combo are gonna do. But the issue I have with a lot of the ballistic tables for 22 is that they're often based around the velocity you get from something like a 20 to 24 inch long barrel. A lot of the most common 22 rifles today have barrels closer to 16 to 18 inches. That means the ballistic data from a longer barrel might not even really be useful as even kind of a ballpark starting figure. So we did some of our own testing to give you one more data point for you to work with when you're considering 22 ballistics. We measured the bullet drop and muzzle velocity of six different loads out of my 16 inch Savage Mark II. Two of the loads were subsonic with muzzle velocity a little over 1000 feet per second. Those were the CCI 40 grain polymer coated clean 22 and the Ely 38 grain subsonic hollow point. We had three high velocity loads that measured close to 1300 feet per second. The 40 grain copper plated round nose version of the CCI mini mag the 40 grain copper plated Winchester Wildcat and the 36 grain Remington Viper. And then we had one extra high velocity load that measured around 1500 feet per second, the 32 grain copper plated hollow point CCI Stinger. Now to be completely honest, for me, this is actually more of a theoretical than a practical exercise. For pest control, I've never needed to take a shot more than 50 yards away. My property is just not that big. So I use subsonic ammo with a suppressor to stay as quiet as possible. I zero the gun at 50 and it'll hit within about a half inch of that for any target between about 15 and 50 yards. It's pretty straightforward. But of course, 22 long rifle is viable far beyond 50 yards. Uh, in the comments of that last video, some of you guys mentioned using your 22s to take out squirrels and prairie dogs, and other pests at 100 yards and beyond. So for these six loads, we fired five round groups from of interest at 50, 100, 150, and 200 yards. We zeroed our rifle at 50 yards, so that is our starting point. At 100 yards, the subsonic loads dropped more than seven inches. The Stinger has about 50% more velocity than those, and it only dropped two inches. Moving out to 150 yards, the gulf between the fastest and slowest bullets is even wider. The Ely 38 grain subsonic that I like to use at home drops 30 inches at 150 yards, while the Stinger drops just under 11 inches. The other supersonic loads were a few inches lower. All of those bullets really start to drop between 150 and 200 yards. We had to staple together a special extra tall target just to catch all the bullets. At 200, the Stinger impacts two and a half feet below the point of aim. The Ely drops four and a half feet. Now I know lots of shooters practice with 22 long rifle out to 300 and 400 yards and beyond, 
For that, you really need a scope with some kind of bullet drop reticle, and you have to be 100% sure of your exact range. And that's the difference between ballistics and what I would call practical ballistics. For small game hunting or pest control, 200 is probably pushing the limit of what's practical. With this gun and the simple duplex reticle and this optic, I wouldn't be comfortable trying to shoot a small animal at an unknown distance if I thought it was much past 100 yards. But even at 100, we can see how ammo selection makes a huge difference. The higher velocity loads give you a big advantage because they just don't drop as much. The CCI Stinger, for example, is marketed as a varmint load, and that's not just hype. The extra velocity really does make range estimation less of a factor you have to worry about with small targets. In my case, with targets inside 50 yards, a subsonic load works just fine because keeping the noise down is a greater priority than a flat trajectory. Okay guys, that is all I've got for today. Hope you found that helpful. Next time you need some ammo, be sure to get it from us with lightning fast shipping at luckygunner.com.